You're listening to Nightmare on Film Street. The current time is 666. Traffic is clear ahead from here to the afterlife. But it's hell outside. For the next hour, you're on Nightmare Time. So, let's give a grave welcome to our hosts, John and Kim. Hello, fiends, and welcome to Nightmare on Film Street, the horror movie podcast for the casually obsessed. I'm John. I'm Kim. And this week, we are talking about kooky Stephen King movies. It's the beginning of a new double feature. We're talking about two... Man, just throw a dart into that guy's bibliography. Guaranteed you're hitting a kooky one. Like, all of his stories. Every single one of them. Pretty Co- kooky. Pretty kooky. Pretty kooky. Including... Thinner, directed by Tom Holland, originally written under the pen name Richard Bachman. Yeah, so technically this is not a kooky king, this is a kooky Bachman. Come on, come, yeah, <laughs> but then f- 1985, like, what, seven years after this book was published, we put out a book called The First Four Bachmans by Stephen King. Because so he was outed. Uh, the screenplay of this was also co-written by uh, Michael McDowell, who wrote Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice, Tales from the Dark Side. A ton of Tales from the Dark Side, a ton of Tales from the Crypt. This feels like a Tales from the Crypt. It re- yeah. It fe- it feels like a television episode stretched into a feature okay, film. Okay, okay, okay. We haven't done our three good things yet. You're not allowed to shit on the movie, John. Okay, well, for anybody who hasn't seen it, y- you can guess from the title what it's about. Uh, a bad lawyer who accidentally causes... You can get that from the title? You can get all that from the title. (laughs) Yeah, no, a man is cursed. An overweight lawyer is cursed. Uh, An overweight lawyer trying to lose weight is cursed to become thinner and thinner and thinner until he wastes away. There is a great line in the movie where he says uh, that he's being erased. That's kind of (laughs) great. It is pretty good. That is pretty good. Uh, But the rest of this movie, kooky. Kim... Give me three good things about Thinner. One of them can't be that it's kooky. <laughs> no, okay, okay. So number one, I'm going to say, this is a body horror film. There is a lot of practical effects in the movie. Okay, sure. And they're really well done. The, they do look good. The fat suit on yep. Billy, the lead character, is really well done. It's seamless. His his face looks great. There's a, there's a shower scene. I don't know if I like the chest piece. But then, like, when he starts to get thinner and gaunt... Um, there's there's a lot of you know variance on uh, the weight loss as it progresses. Yeah, we get a little into stage makeup as we start getting a little a little gaunt. Eh. But I love it the entire way through, and because it's so reliant on those practical effects, every single scene you're gonna have something. The entire movie, yeah. Like, there's one moment in the middle where, oh, oh, this is what the real actor looks like. (laughs) And then from there, we just have to keep making him look thinner and thinner, more gaunt, more sickly. Uh, So you're you're right. Lots of blankets, lots of towels, house coats. Pretty much every scene of this movie has some practical element to it. I don't love referring to it as a body horror movie. I guess it's a body horror movie. I don't know. Something, it's not, oh, that's the tricky part about body horror, right? Like, David Cronenberg just kind of changed what body horror is. Okay, so, but if this was a Tales from the Crypt movie, the only difference between it being a curse is that it would be a tapeworm. Okay. Body horror, right? As soon as you say tapeworm, you're like, oh, yeah, it's fucking body horror. Same process is happening. He's losing weight very, very fast. Soon, he will die. Horror! Also, one guy gets turned into a lizard. It's all off screen. That was going to be be a number two good thing. (laughs) Yeah, but it's... It's an alleged lizard, John. I think I remember. I, I think I had watched. Man, I've seen this movie a lot, and as a kid, I think I watched an, a, a copy of the movie with the director's commentary. I think because I can't find any of this info anywhere on Wikipedia, but I swear, head canon. I have heard previously that they tried to do it, but they just didn't have the budget for the lizard man stuff, or it didn't look very good. So they cut it all out because it's it's all relayed via his wife, who's like, "You won't believe what's happening to him off screen. Oh, it's <laughs> truly to ter- you wouldn't even want to see it." Oh, yeah. No, my good thing number two is that a guy gets turned into a fucking lizard. Like, what a great. Cur- you can't use that as a good thing because it's it, you're selling something that we don't see. Okay, fine. Then my good thing number two is Joe Montana, who is... That's what's going to be my pick. (laughs) (laughs) Fat Tony from The Simpsons playing a completely different, less fat 
a mobster in this movie. Yeah, he's definitely a mobster in this. And he's, I guess he's supposed to be the bad guy. I would argue... How do you figure out who the bad guy in this movie is? Well, Billy is pretty awful. Um, and he does not learn at all uh, the moral of the curse that's been put on him. No. Um, but Billy's just like hired goon bad. He just shoots up an entire encampment and is just because his friend was like, hey, I've had this curse put on me. And he's like, don't worry, I got you, bro. I'm okay, going to murder we're, some people. You're, we're getting into the weeds <laughs> of it. Okay, so it's it's hard to tell who the bad guys are, but Joe Montana, definitely one of them. Fat Tony's here, repping it for the mobsters. What's our good thing number three? You were totally just trying to cut me off. You're like, stop talking, Kim. We're in the three good we're things. We're in the intro. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good thing number three and I won't get into it too much Thank because you. it's uh, <laughs> definitely the finale of the movie. Ah, oh, this would have been my good But thing fucking ever. cursed pie! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, c- cursed desserts. Don't you love it? Strawberry pie that's been cursed. You know, that just all, turns people into goo. <laughs> all bad news should come served in dessert. Like, uh, sir, your mother's died of cancer, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> having a bite of pie. <laughs> you're like, that's so awful. Can I get some more whipped cream? Did you weigh yourself? 297. Billy, you were 297 last week. Well, it takes some time for these diets to work. For Billy Halleck, life is sweet. Bigger is better. And too much is never enough. Winning, winning. You have got to stop eating like that. I can't help it, Heidi. All I think about is food. But tonight, all of that will change. <laughs> you kill my daughter, and I curse you. Finner. From the best selling novel by Stephen King comes the new shape of terror. This diet you're on, what is it? I don't think you'd like it, Henry. I'm being erased. Fear the power. That old gypsy put a curse on me. It's all your fault if you hadn't hit that old lady. Beware the danger. This is getting out of hand. This has been out of hand, and I'm just the guy to put it back. Believe the curse. Please, take it off before this goes any further. I never take it off. Stephen King's Thinner. <laughs> More terror. <laughs> less filling. Thinner is currently sitting at a 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb, 19% on Rotten Tomatoes, with an audience rating of 31. Uh, so not much better. And a 2.7 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Now, I mentioned up top that this is directed by Tom Holland, who we all know and love from Child's Play and Fright Night. And I gotta tell you, this is not the only kooky Stephen King movie he's directed. He also did Langoliers, which fuck. Isn't that not your, that's your favorite fucking made-for-TV Stephen King property? And it's so weird. I'm surprised we're yeah. not doing it in this double feature. We should've. It's, it's so fucking weird. It's it's air it's airport meatballs that travel through time. <laughs> and somehow it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's just too long because we'd have to watch the whole thing to talk about it on the podcast. It's like oh, yeah. Isn't it like four long. parts? Yeah. yeah. It's one of those TV movie events. It's too much. <laughs> it's really good. They also, oh, wait, we're not even talking about this movie, but I, 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 I this is my soapbox. We're never going to talk about the Langoliers on the podcast. There is a really, really weird movie that came out not long ago. Is this Langolier related? This is Langolier related. Which is thinner related. Yes. <laughs> There's this really weird movie we saw at a film festival a couple of years ago that I, I don't think it's ever actually come out because it's one of those like art pieces that you'll see at a film festival that can never be sold because it's just a, it's a rights issue. Anyway, this movie's called The Timekeepers of Eternity and it's the Langoliers but like cut down into an hour long episode of television but it's like it's all done on scraps of paper this makes no sense to anybody this is, <laughs> I, imagine imagine the langoliers remade cut down into one hour but it's all doodles on pieces of paper who is this 
this for? Is this just for you? Me. <laughs> it was for me, and it hit hard. <laughs> it was amazing. And if you can find it, you should see it. Uh, it's just like a weird piece of art. And uh, the world's better for it. It's similar to how the world is better because Thinner exists. This is not a good movie. I'll say that right up top. I liked it. Yeah, but... Not good. No, it's... I liked it, too. Not good. <laughs> I, I have this... I live in this weird soft spot, and maybe it's because it reminds me so much of Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Dark Side and hours of made-for-TV horror uh-huh. that I just... I buckle in, I sit you, down, okay. and I appreciate. But I'm you, just here for the ride. You don't... There isn't, like, a part of you halfway through that's just like, oof, we could have cut 40 minutes of this? I mean, it is a little long, but if we were to cut anything, we would cut out the mob boss... And oh, who's, no, 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 who starts not. murdering the people that put the curse on him. So, like, no, nah, I, <laughs> I wouldn't cut it. <laughs> no, okay, so I'm saying I like this movie, We wouldn't too. cut Fat Tony. I've seen, a, I've seen this movie a lot. I've seen it a bunch of times. <laughs> but I can, couldn't, would never tell anybody that it's a good movie. I would say that I like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> the same way that The Pope's Exorcist, probably not a good movie. Oh, terrible. It's trash. Great movie. I would like to buy it now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we need it on Blu-ray, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Probably was not helped that we watched an old VHS copy and the, the whole time we're just like... Probably what? was not helped or was helped immensely by? I'm not sure because I, I, I look... I could occasionally see my reflection in the window and it would look to just like your face <laughs> where we were like what the fuck oh is yeah going there on? was a lot of dialogue i did not capture it just warbled and chewed up and it's like it do we upgrade to blu-ray is that a bad move is this movie available on blu-ray i don't know if this ever probably went beyond in a, vhs probably in a kooky king for four film set oh yeah at walmart we yeah in the bin yeah. like maybe 8.99 dvd langoliers is definitely included <laughs> yeah, in that four pack definitely <laughs> yeah if we're lucky we get silver bullet if we're lucky we get rose red with it john maybe may oh maybe it's maybe it's a four pack of Richard Bachman movies. Ooh, are Maybe. there any other Bachman movies? Oh, there's tons of Bachman movies. Let me give you the Bachman best. We got <laughs> <laughs> The Running Man, which is wild. That was a Bachman? That's a Bachman. Huh. Way different from the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but the the Edgar Wright movie that's coming out sounds like it's going to be a little closer to it. Um, I mean, how much did Bachman write? He also wrote The Long Walk, which is eternally being adapted. Last we checked, Andre Overdahl was supposed to be making it. Maybe he still is. Who knows? Good book, though. Wow. Yeah. It was whole bunch he kept writing books after that even after he was outed like stephen king like wrote the introduction for a collection of bachman books saying like this is why i did it <laughs> and they still kept putting out books that's fun though the book came- it becomes like meta and fourth wall kind of yeah the bachman thing is weird because he was trying to uh, in his introduction he was talking about how he wanted to figure out whether it was luck or talent what you would attribute his success to. Mm, so he was like, if I write these these books and I don't, you know, sell them with the Stephen King name, yeah. would I still be a big name in horror? Exactly. And they didn't put any, a lot of marketing behind it. Like, the whole idea was like, will people just find these books because they're good or not? He got outed too soon for it to really, for like the results to Consensus really- Consensus not made. Yeah, because like, I think I had read that Thinner sold maybe, I don't know, like 20,000 copies, 30,000 copies but when it, it first like, came isn't out. Isn't that good for a book? Uh, uh, in 1978 or yeah, 84 I guess or not whenever, great. not really great. But then, like, when everybody found out that it was Stephen King, sales went through the roof. Mm. That, that That's at least what he said in the introduction for his book. But more likely is that it was, you know, standard industry practice that you only put out one book a year. Yeah. And Stephen King's writing fucking eight books a year, <laughs> you know, picking and choosing which four to publish. So he created the pseudonym so he could publish more books. You you'd think though that even though like he did do it because he was just like well screw you guys I write fifteen books an hour yeah I'm, I'm an ap- early adapter <laughs> I'm an early adopter of cocaine I wrote so, I write so many books <laughs> <laughs> you'd think though that it, that the Bachman using a pseudonym he would differentiate between the King name like he would use Bachman to you know write maybe the Green Mile or f- like something that's oh sure that's j- not as genre as the other stuff keep horror for King and do everything else under Bachman I'm sure if you're a big Stephen King nerd you'd be able to be to tell me the differences between the two of them. I was reading them when I was like a 
or like a young teenager, like 12 years old. So thinner like, feels like king, though, is all I'm really getting at is thinner feels like king. But it's a, we're, we're basing that on the movie we just watched, which was adapted in a post-Bachman oh world. Oh, my God, John. <laughs> <laughs> it also feels like Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. Which does kind of feel like Stephen King products. The man kind of changed just horror forever, you know? That's just That's just how it is. And like Stephen King, the premise the premise is so simple. The setup is so easy, and then we just really dig into it <laughs> for maybe longer than we need to. The, the and the, and the setup is is so weird because we know that Billy, our our the lawyer we're following, who gets the curse on him, we know he's a bad guy. From the get go, maybe it's just because of the casting choice. Like they they cast such a perfect actor for the role. He looks evil. Well, um, he's a defense lawyer who's defending a mobster, which we just assume. Okay, I understand the guilty. morality police of TV who are like, "Well, he defended a uh, guilty client." It's just like, yeah, but that's due process, and that's all part of the system. And he should have a defense attorney who defends him, even though he's guilty. Yeah. I think the slimy part is that he's like, well, I wouldn't defend him if I wasn't fully convinced in his innocence. Like, okay, that's a lie. But, like, all you have to say is, like, I don't care whether he's guilty or not. Everybody deserves a defense. But he's an he's an asshole. We yeah. all know he's an asshole. Yeah. He's an asshole to himself. <laughs> like he, Yeah, and he's an asshole to his body. He's, he does not treat his body well. Everybody around him is rooting for him to lose weight. And not just because they're like, ew, fat, gross. They're just like, you're at a point now where it's unhealthy. Like, like we're worried, hypotension is a thing. We're worried about you having a heart attack. His wife has created an entire program on a very early 90s laptop where she's graphing his weight loss and everything. She's very involved. She's making him smoothies in the morning. He's complaining that they taste gross and it's like the most disgusting thing on the planet it just looks like blueberries and milk it looks fine it looks delicious i would drink it he eats a lot of doritos in this this is maybe the most doritos i've ever seen on screen in a single thing that wasn't a doritos commercial there are different scenes where he's eating doritos while he's driving too like he's going from one meeting to another and he's eating doritos as he's losing weight i don't think there's a moment where he does, he's not cramming food in his mouth. Okay. He goes to the doctor and he's eating. He, that's the thing that drove me absolutely <laughs> insane. I'm like, who eats at the doctor's office? And like at some point because of the rapid weight loss that he's experienced that is like paranormal levels of weight loss. Yeah. I guess he starts adopting this must eat lots of calories otherwise I'm gonna waste away. Yeah, So, but nobody but ever no, says that out loud. Yeah, like there's no point where he goes from eating because I really like food to eating because oh shit, this weight loss needs to slow down at yeah. some point. There's no moment where we, we flip the page from one to the other. It's just like, I eat Doritos for fun <laughs> to like, I eat Doritos because I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, like where she's like, this diet run, you gotta stop. He's like, does it look like I'm on a diet? And he's like, he's wearing cookies. an apron. <laughs> He's putting, he's putting cookies. cookies in the oven. <laughs> but he's still he's eating one raw one off the pan. Like, he's not licking a spoon out of the bowl. He's like, oh, before I put it in, I'm going to eat this one. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a... There's We've a, all been there. Yeah, but I usually don't grab it off the pan with my bare hands <laughs> like I've rescued it from the oven. <laughs> like a bear getting salmon out <laughs> yeah, of the river. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so there's a carnival in town, and uh, he has just won this big case, and to try and, oh, you know, honey, th- life's about more than just food. You can't think about food all the time. Here, let me let me help you think of something other than food. His Which wife- is, like, so <laughs> unsexy. Because yeah, you're making food part of the foreplay. And she- I don't like it at all she goes down on him while they're driving and so he's super distracted and he runs over an old woman who's part of the carnival that's in town uh her father which is not addressed at all her father looks younger than her yeah they look like they're maybe brother and sister yeah husband and wife yeah uh he curses him at the courthouse because like the the cop the judge they're all friends of his he's a lawyer in a small town there's a whole bunch of collusion nobody cares yeah he definitely could have got a manslaughter charge he was distracted driving for sure absolutely but everybody's everybody's prejudiced against the the gypsies in town. Like, oh, they were in my pharmacy and they were stealing Stephen King cameo as a pharmacist who's like, oh, I think she was running out of the store because she was stealing. Like this this fragile old woman who's there to pick up a prescription was stealing. Come on, everybody's in on it. 
the cop lies on the stand. The judge doesn't care about the evidence. So they're essentially sweeping it under the rug. They're letting him go scot-free, even though he should have been charged with vehicular manslaughter. Mm-hmm. He's cursed at the courthouse by the old man. He just brushes his cheek and says, thinner. Yeah, it's like he knows he's on a diet or something. Yeah. He's just like, this is going to be a real good moral lesson for you. <laughs> Which is basically from then on, he starts losing weight rapidly. I think within the first, what is it, seven days, he's he loses 14, 14 pounds. pounds. And he's not alarmed. <laughs> like, I would be terrified if I lost that much weight that fast. And his wife is. His wife's like, you know... When you're like 300 pounds, though, I mean, I'm sure there is a period of elation when you're finally... The diet is finally starting to work. Oh, sure. But yeah, it very quickly it becomes apparent that the weight loss is very, very fast. Yeah. And, and th- not slowing down. They're worried that it's cancer. Like, that's the that's their thing. Like, <laughs> which is always a fun line, too. Like, oh, if I'm, if I'm fat, it's a heart attack. If I'm skinny, it's cancer. Like, what the fuck do you want me to do? I mean, we also might think it might be a tapeworm, but... <laughs> there's, there's also that, yeah. But... That would be my first thought. I'd be like, there's a worm eating my food inside me. I don't like that thought. Let's... Mm, no. That's what I would be <laughs> That would thinking. be just because of how... I watch horror movies. I know a worm when I see one. <laughs> well, So anyway, everybody involved in this, the cop, the judge, the lawyer, they've all been cursed. They all get cursed. We, in in some regard, we find out later on because like the judge stops showing up at golf and we're not seeing him at dinner and it's just his wife eating sad five-star Michelin restaurant dinners by herself. (laughs) (laughs) When he goes to see if the judge is okay, she's like, he's a lizard man now. (laughs) It's a really long lizard man scene. (laughs) Yeah, he's in Baltimore. We've hidden the lizard man away. (laughs) And so we just believe that he's turning into a lizard man. But other people are like, no, he's got skin cancer. He's going to get treatment for his skin cancer. And and we're like, but his wife says it's lizard skin, not cancer skin. And the cop is sort of uh, just bloated. Like, he's overcome with ulcers. He's getting boils. Yeah. Yeah. Which seems like a reasonable curse. Uh, Also, the thinner thing just sort of works because you're wasting away. I don't understand why. So when one gets lizard, one gets boils, and then Billy happens to get the most poetic irony curse of the three where the other guys did they have did one guy have a lizard hang up did the other guy have boils as he was a child yeah I I know that's those are the things that don't really make any sense like I just love the idea of the old man being like hmm what to do with these ooh I know lizard because they even say to him that he's like he touched me on the chest and he said lizard you're like okay like he's really just like pulling words uh, out of the well, air. Well, I guess he did have psoriasis because remember the doctor was like, oh, it's just your psoriasis acting up. So maybe him becoming a lizard is extreme psoriasis. His, wi- psoriasis... his wife said that it was reptile skin. I know. Psoriasis, though, your skin dries out and gets all crusty and I, stuff. And I, so maybe yeah. the maybe the curse version of that is like, lizard! <laughs> Well, th- I'm trying to make a. I'm. Uh, I'm trying to bring us there, John. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you're landing this plane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> when he goes to see the cop who blows his brains out after off camera, off that camera. is that is a leap. <laughs> That's the way you do it. Uh, he says like, oh, he became a lizard, eh? Well, I guess he, I guess he finally became what he was. I, was he trying to say that he was a snake? That he was because like lizard doesn't make any Cold-hearted. sense. Cold hearted. Cold hearted. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Cold blooded. Cold. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Lizards. People just don't like crawly critters, I think. No. They're all bad lawyers. (laughs) I don't know. It doesn't quite make sense. It'd be funny. It'd be way better if one of them was just getting fatter and fatter, right? Like, that'd be fun. Like one's gaining the weight that the one's losing. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have no, I, I have no justification for any of them beyond uh, Billy, the lead lawyer. It is weird how little they're included in it. Like maybe they're just supposed to show Billy that, like, oh, this this weight loss thing is not going to stop. Like yeah. they are on it for some reason. They are going at an escalated rate to him. Well, they die in like three days. Yeah. he has like a week and a half. They do you really think this whole movie takes place over a week and a half? I feel like it. It's it's well, it feels like a week and a half sometimes while you're watching it, but no, like it's uh, I think it's like months. Maybe no, it is not months. No, you don't think so. No, I'd say it's a week and a half to less than a week. Man, so <laughs> much happens in a week and a half. I, okay, now it doesn't necessarily make sense at first that the other guys are dying so much faster. But I think it's because there's nothing they can do to stop the lizard skin or the boils. But because Billy's wasting away, 
like he it's kind of like he's like walking up an escalator the wrong direction like inevitably he's gonna hit the ground but it's like he's just trying to keep up the pace by just shoving calories in his mouth also he's starting from a precipice like he's starting at 300 pounds he's got a he's got quite a quite a lot of weight to lose to get to yeah um organ failure mode but at some point he's just eating nonstop all day Whatever. At one point, he yells at his wife in the kitchen. He's got like food coming out of his mouth, and I was like, "This is true body (laughs) horror." It was gross. Yeah, but that, that's what he is, what he has to do, right? Like, I think he would have been dead a lot sooner if he didn't have the superpower of, like, unlimited intake. I don't know if the if the calories it's consuming are doing anything. I honestly I think, think it's a few times. Tra- no, I don't bit. think it's doing anything at all. I think it's I like think, giving a plant a single drop of water. No, I think the weight cup. loss itself is magic and has nothing to do with the calories he, he's consuming. Okay, well, he confronts... What are the poos like? Like, if you're fucking eating 15,000 calories a day. Kim, it's the one question. The true horror of it all. It's the question. Do they evaporate because he's losing weight? Nobody's nobody's got the guts to ask, and I want to give you the credit for asking the hard questions (laughs) and holding this movie's feet to the fire. I'm going to send Richard Bachman an email. (laughs) What of the (laughs) poos? Tell us about the poos, you fucking coward. (laughs) <laughs> it's probably in the book. I, uh, There's got to be at least some poo talk. Now, here's the question. Is that a is that a Stephen King thing, or is that a uniquely <laughs> developed Bachman thing, where he's like, Bachman's really into the, the shits? <laughs> he did create, like, a backstory for Richard Bachman, eh? Like, I love that. Like a whole biography for did. him. Yeah. He's a writer. <laughs> yeah. It's only natural. <laughs> Uh, oh, I got to I gotta also tell you, let me see if I can find my phone. Just while we're back on the Bachman thing, I, there is one fun detail I found about Richard Bachman. Stephen King basically buried Richard Bachman. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, they, they, they put out a... Uh... <laughs> oh, this is insane. After Bachman's... This is directly from Wikipedia. Wait, is Richard Bachman dead? Yes. But he has released novels posthumously, uh, and because some continue to be found in his notebooks. Oh. <laughs> but I, I, so this is this is directly from like the press notes that came out in like 1985 uh, after Bachman's true identity was revealed. Later publicity dispatches and in the about the author blurbs, uh, it was revealed that Bachman died suddenly in late 1985. Of cancer of the pseudonym. Oh, <laughs> a rare form well, of schizonomia. A, didn't he have a brain tumor removed? <laughs> that's what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's part of his backstory too. Also, he and his wife tragically lost their son very young after falling down a well, oh which sounds God. very Stephen Kingish. Like, there's no way. But he also didn't think Bakken was haunted by the ghost of his own son. Oh, he absolutely. Was. He, I, you know, he's really cheesed about. I bet is that he was hoping to later write that memoir. He never sold that summer home, and that's where he goes to write. To, to write his horror novels and like his writing room l- overlooks the well where his son died oh god and sometimes when he's got writer's block his son just whispers into his ear I don't <laughs> like- know that now it's too creepy take me out of this theorizing the second half of this movie is truly in- not insane but like just from a story beat yeah we go we go off off map like we yeah we like we turn the gps off like, he's, we... he's basically like a day away from dying and we're halfway through the movie yeah he just holds on he calls like, up his his newly exonerated mafia friend and yeah. he's like you know the romani people called me the white man from town and now i'm white man from town cursing them but i'm also dying so i need you to perform this i need curse you to for curse me. for me <laughs> <laughs> which is what the white man really does he delegates <laughs> It's yeah, it's true. And there's no there's no cursing involved. He just goes and shoots up their camp. And... Yeah, he poisons their dogs. Yeah. He shoots their camp. Yeah, the dogs. He tricks them into killing one of their own. And so they call it off with the best final uh like the the, the best solution for a curse ever. How yeah, you have to honestly, pass the curse on. After a you know, a, like a lackluster middle where you're like, What is what is all this mafia stuff? Why do we have acid (laughs) (laughs) there is there is acid yeah he booby traps a girl like here's a jar of acid don't let it spill on your face not worth getting into (laughs) (laughs) he meets the old man again who cursed him well see this is the trope though of the gypsy curse you do have to pass it on like it can't go away like matter curses and matter cannot be destroyed yes (laughs) They can only take other forms. So yeah, he has to poison. You have to give this curse to the pie. Uh, 
and then you have to give the pie to someone else. Oh, is- and I had forgotten that at one point he gets his hand shot through, which looks pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah The yeah. doctor looks through the hole. It's yeah, wonderful. That's a, that's a great little practical effect thing, yeah. I like yeah. that. I like that a lot. But then I old- always love when somebody looks through a bullet hole, especially in a hand. But then the old man stabs through that open wound, and he bleeds into the pie, and the pie is like... <laughs> yeah, the pie, like, bubbles. <laughs> like, it knows it's cursed. The pie is the Necronomicon, is yeah. what the pie is. It's moving around and I shit. I love the pie. Like, the yum, pie yum, yum. is the star of the movie. <laughs> Which is why it was one of the good things, for sure. Uh, he immediately starts feeling better. I thought you were going to start addressing the pie as he. <laughs> he starts, he goes back to the man's home, and he, he sits patiently. on the counter alluringly. <laughs> but yeah, Billy, the lawyer, he goes back home, he's immediately feeling better, he's starting to gain weight. And he hasn't even passed the curse on yet. Which no, is, exactly. I guess because the curse is in the pie, it's yes. out of his body. But I think he has to give the curse soon, like very quickly, probably before, before the pie goes bad. Otherwise, I would assume he gets the curse back. Mm. And we also glossed over the like weird conversations where he's decided that his wife is cheating on him with his family doctor. Yeah, just because he's seen his wife with the doctor a bit. Well, her husband is going through an extreme strange weight loss and has broken out of the in-care doctor-patient study he's involved in. Well, Joe Montaigne, the mob guy, who I'm just going to call Skinny Tony, is he, he He lets him know that they have His essentially... His name is Richie? Richie Tony has um, learned that the doctor and his wife have sort of... Uh, they've admitted him to a, a mental institution in absentia, so they've effectively, like, close the door on him. Like, well, I think that's just if anybody finds him, that's where he's going to get put. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I think they they put out, like, an APB on his mental health not being great. Which is, yeah, because we also find out that there's a missing poster. There's, like, a, not a bounty on his head. I like that the only reward. photo they have is of him huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't look like that at all. It's like, okay, imagine this guy, but he's, like, lost 250 of the 300 pounds. Like, he looks awful right now. This is why I think it's hilarious that you 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 assume this movie takes place over a week and a half. It does take place. I, it does take place over a week and a half. There's a murder. There's a trial. There's a, a developing period of a curse. There's APBs. okay. We're at the end of the trial. We're at the last day of the trial. I, I, I guess they do remark on it being no. I mean, like the, to the trial, like the coroner's inquest for the. It was the just death a coroner's inquest. It was an afternoon. The, the, the very next afternoon. Yep. I doubt that. Yep. Anyway, he brings the pie home, and he's decided Anyway, that- he brings the pie <laughs> <laughs> He uh, is intending on delivering the curse to his wife as revenge. Yeah, because he's learned nothing. Not at all. So We should all be learning that revenge does not taste as sweet as the pie on the counter. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim. You've Thank really you. You've really brought this home. Thank you. Um, he has not learned a goddamn thing, and, like, he, he retreated into himself. Like, he's- gone once he's cursed because he's either like freaking out about how he's losing weight or he feels so good that he's ignoring his family nobody gives a f- like everybody's worried about him he doesn't give a fuck he's not around he's just screaming all the time like of course she was looking for comfort with somebody else it doesn't necessarily mean that she's cheating on you she just needs some sort of emotional support that you're not getting you know the real moment that, that, that their marriage was over was when she clicked delete on that spreadsheet in the computer <laughs> which you know happened at one point <laughs> She's completely turned her back. <laughs> he leaves the pie for her to eat. And he says it's strawberry, where it's clearly cherry. blood and cherry. <laughs> Absolutely blood and cherry. Uh, but strawberry is her favorite, and he's like, I know. Uh, I'm going to go to bed. You go ahead and die alone in the kitchen. Yeah, and then he says something weird and ominous on the stairs and just goes to sleep. Yeah, when he wakes up in the morning, he's like, honey, are you there? Did you... Did you try that pie? And when he pulls the sheet back, it's like she's had Ebola overnight. She's like, a gooey husk. She's a gooey husk. There's blood coming out of everywhere. She's just like a shell of a person. She's just like hair and skeleton and gore. It looks awesome. And he's like, oh, good morning to you too. Like he's not worried at all about how he's going to fucking explain this to the cops. Right? I left town for... Three and a half days. Oh, officer, <laughs> this this husk of a wife was definitely natural causes. Yeah, you you leave town for mis- under mysterious circumstances, come back out of the blue, and then your wife is gored. There's no way you're going to be like, I think she had a really bad flu. <laughs> like, it's just not going to go. Like, nobody's going to be, everybody's going to be like, did you poison this pie? <laughs> Because <laughs> you also keep offering it to all the investigators who are looking into this homicide. 
Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, he discovers that. He Wait, he kisses the husk wife. He kisses the husk wife. And he's wife. like, mmm, tastes like pie. And we're all like, ugh. <sighs> he kind of open mouth kisses her, It was too. a real gross kiss. It was a lot. Like, you would expect, okay, maybe just like a, thanks, honey. Mm. <laughs> thanks but, like, for but dying. But no, he's like, mm, blah, 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 blah. Like, he's practicing on his hand, kind of kissing. Like, oh, when he's like eight years old. It was inappropriate. I didn't like it. But when he goes downstairs, he discovers that his daughter had come home, and in the morning, she's eating a slice of pie for breakfast. Effectively dying as well. Like, she's going to be dead before the afternoon. Yeah, and so I think he's deciding now that he's going to finish the pie, because, like, why live? My daughter's dead. So, and But he goes in to take a bite of that pie when the doorbell rings, and Dr. Adultery is at the door. It's Dr. Mike! <laughs> Dr. Mike is at the door, and he invites him in for a nice breakfast yeah, slice of pie. He calls it breakfast pie. Would which you is, like some breakfast pie? It's the biggest lie of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, even the fact that his daughter was like, mm, I just had some of that pie for breakfast. I thought like, you were a defense lawyer. You're just like, this here, evidence A, breakfast pie. Somebody's like, surely he means quiche. They look down, oh no, that's that's a <laughs> surely, strawberry pie. <laughs> surely he means quiche. He just forgot the name of it. We've all been there. Oh no, this is this is blood and cherry pie. <laughs> Do you think at the end of the movie, because he's very happy with himself, he's like, ah, today's gonna yeah, be a Yeah, he's completely day. forgotten that his daughter's dying when yeah. he's like, come on in, Mike. Do you think that he eats the pie? Or do you think at this point he's just like, well, real sad about my daughter, but I'm getting full ass revenge? <laughs> And I think he eats the pie. Yeah, you think so? It's just like he ends. It it ends on him being so happy about having kill, being able to kill the doctor as well. He's a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah, like he's a straight up psychopath. That's true. Did he have a bite of the pie before Mike came, or did no? He just... he, he he brought a, a forkful to his lips, mm. and he didn't bite it before the doorbell rang. And I love that he t- he's in despair. His, his, he's killed his wife. Yay, happy about that. But now his, like, 14, 15-year-old daughter is also going to die horribly. And he and lets her go fault. off to hang out with her friends. She's, she's like, I'm like, going to go play soccer with Lisa. Like, that's not going to be the most nightmarish afternoon of Lisa's life. Yeah, like, now Lisa has PTSD. <laughs> Can you imagine you're playing soccer with your friends and one of them just turns to goo in front of you? That's the deleted scene we should have got. Oh, man. But then, yeah, he... um is not distraught enough to ignore the doorbell, I wouldn't have answered the door. I would have just eaten yeah, that goddamn pie. Yeah, if you were going to eat your suicide pie, like, yeah. you'd probably just take the phone off the hook. Yeah, you wouldn't answer the door. Like, ugh, better answer this Better answer this door first. <laughs> <Don't>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was honestly expecting an ending where he ate the pie and then he went up to bed and he lied down beside his wife. That's yeah. what I was expecting. But instead he's like, come on in, Dr. Mac. Let's eat this breakfast pie together. He could still have done that after... After eating his own pie. Why are we debating, like, the nuance of the pie? (laughs) The fact of the matter is he didn't learn anything and his daughter had to die because of it. Yeah. And he murdered his wife. Everybody dies. She was a nice lady. She was- All she did was care about him. That's true. What a monster. Actually, everybody was really nice to this guy. Even even the mafia guy. Even Richie was nice to him. Everybody. He had a fucking Tommy gun shipped to their their hideout. The only people. Via UPS. <laughs> <laughs> Every single person in his life just wants the best for him, and he kills them horribly. Like, they all die. He is like, he's like Walter White, right? Like, he's like a cancer in the center of the relationship of everybody that he knows, and he drags them all down with him, and they all die horrible, horrible deaths. Which is what makes this a horror movie. What a kooky, kooky horror movie. It was very kooky. Now, I'm uh, I'm, I'm very excited for next week's Stephen King movie, because it's truly kooky. I think this one's just a little absurd like this one's this one's kooky but just makes some weird decisions it's like such a strange movie because it kind of feels like an hour of television that's been stretched out uh but i mean though it, you have to give it praise for being pie related horror i love a cursed pie sure yeah not enough not enough of them next week we're talking about the I almost said the Langoliers. You're like, next week, the Langoliers! <laughs> yeah. We're, we're changing course here. I mean, fuck, I might watch the Langoliers just for fun so we can talk about it some more. Next week, we're talking about The Lawnmower Man, a truly kooky movie. Yeah, I haven't seen this, so I'm very 
trepidatiously excited. Barely a Stephen King movie. It's like it's based on a Stephen King story in name alone. Uh, is it a short story or? It is a short story. Yeah, it's not a Richard Bachman story. It's from I think it's from the Skeleton Crew. It might be from Night Shift. It's. I'll tell you all about the short story when we when we when we sit down to record that episode. But before we get into that, I need a rating from you for Thinner. How would you rate Thinner? Oh man, it's it's hard to say because I like it more than its rating. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. So you go. I, I don't want to influence your decision at all. Okay. I'm giving it a two point five. Okay. Out of four. <laughs> so I'm giving it a point five pie bump. Yeah, well, yeah. And I'm giving it a two point five out of four. <laughs> I baked that pie that pie bump into my rating. <laughs> I had fun though. Like I love the curse trope, and it's love it's curse. such a generic story. But I love you know somebody being cursed and the whole process of not believing in the curse, and then the curse happens, and then you have to pass it on, and it's such a fun like monkey's paw type story oh, where yeah. it's like you get what you deserve kind of thing and, exactly and i enjoy it even the old man once they once they put the curse into the pie encourages him to eat the yeah pie. he's like you should just do this clean like just eat the pie and die it's yeah, what you, you deserve die, you want to die clean like if you if, exactly like if you if you know death is around the corner like it could go bad at any moment you if the most important thing at this point is dying clean and he doesn't do it and he just takes down everybody around him do you know who that old man is yeah, he's the dad from uh, my Big Fat Greek Wedding. Why didn't you bring that up at all? I, don't I know. really, I was really. Th- I just... It's not the crowd. <laughs> 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 all right, fine. <laughs> okay, well, th- th- there we go. We just got to keep going on. Like, how many horror connections can we make to my Big Fat Greek Wedding? Because, like, first off, dad, obviously in thinner. Andrea Martin is the crazy aunt who was in Black Christmas. I think the husband's been in a horror movie. He was in the Deep Water. The Deep Water. Oh, uh, 47 meters below or 48 meters below, whatever the sequel was. He was the dad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We could keep 48 meters down. Joey Fatone had to be in a horror movie. Um, It doesn't matter. This is such a weird. We're cutting this out. <laughs> anyway, that's what we thought of Thinner. Let us know how you rate this movie, where it falls in your Kooky King ranking. And if you have any other favorite Kooky King adaptations that you watch all the time and you're just like, I know it's not good, but I love it. I feel like it, you know, there's like five. What's your Langoliers? Yeah, what's exactly. John has Langoliers. I have Rose Red. We all have our own Kooky King. <laughs> Somewhere out there, there's a Tommy Knockers fan who's like, I really like that weird alien thing. I'm really looking forward to that James Wan movie that's probably never going to get made. Okay, thanks, Bob. There's always so many Stephen King projects up in the air in development that maybe never will see the light of day. Uh, and fingers crossed they are all as kooky as Thinner and The Lawnmower Man. I'm really excited to talk about that next week. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, let us know all about your favorite Kooky King movies in the Nightmare on Film Street Discord at nofspodcast.com slash discord. And consider supporting the show at nofspodcast.com slash fiend club, where you can get hours of bonus content to chew on in between regular scheduled episodes of the show. Until next time, I'm Kim. I'm John. Stay, stay creepy. creepy. Ah, we should have said stay kooky. It appears you made it out alive, but we'll get you next time. Help us to grow the horde. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you subscribe. More terror can be found lurking on our website, nofspodcast.com. Until next time. Stay creepy, fiends.